Hello everybody, David Ansardi here, and we're going to start off here with the first lecture of the first unit for Biology 202, and this unit will be about the endocrine system, and in a nutshell it's going to be about lots and lots and lots of different hormones. This information will correspond to chapter 16 in your textbook, so yes, the whole unit will correspond to just one chapter, but there's a lot of information in this chapter. Um, there are a number of different important hormones that are produced by this system. Uh, there are a number of different disorders that are associated with um, overproducing or underproducing these hormones, so it's a very important body system and, uh, and an important unit. Now over on the anatomy side, keep in mind, um, if you haven't had one of my distance courses before, over on the anatomy side, we will take a look more closely at the different glands of the body that produce the hormones of the endocrine system, and for that anatomy test, I'm also going to ask you to learn the hormones that are produced by each of the glands and also the disorders that are associated with each of the glands. And um, ordinarily, I wouldn't do that on an anatomy test. Anatomy tests are usually just identifying uh, different anatomical structures, but the endocrine system is kind of light on anatomy. And so that you will start to kind of integrate together the, uh, the different glands with what hormones they produce and diseases that are associated with those different glands and hormones. I'm actually going to move some of that content over to the uh, lab or anatomy portion of the course. So pay really close attention to your study guides for Unit 1 and the physiology versus the anatomy. So you'll know what to expect on which of those two tests for the units. Also, y'all, I've got, um, I'm posting the PowerPoints on Blackboard for you guys for this class. I do recommend, though, yes, I've got quite a bit of text. There, you've got a basic notes framework on the PowerPoints, but you need to take additional notes as well. I don't, you can't just get by in this class with uh, the text that's located on the PowerPoint and just reading over that text. That's not going to serve you very well as far as studying for this, uh, for this course. All right, so the endocrine system, what do we mean by the endocrine system? So back when you first started Biology 201, ANP1, you learned a little bit about what the endocrine system does. And, and in a nutshell, the endocrine system is your body system that produces various hormones. And hormones are chemical messengers that um, allow communication to take place within the body. And uh, the endocrine system, major functions that helps coordinate and integrate the activities of the cells of your body. It helps them function together. It helps make sure that your body is functioning as one unit, and that's very important. Um, influences metabolic activities, your metabolism, in many, many different ways. And it does this through the production of various chemical hormones. Now, uh, at the end of Biology 201, your ANP1 course, you learn that the nervous system is very much involved with controlling bodily processes, but so is the endocrine system. And so what are some of the key differences? Well, one of the main, main ones is, is that the endocrine system acts more slowly. So it's slower to secrete hormones or produce hormones that are going to control some of your bodily processes versus the nervous system, which can act almost instantaneously. However, once you make these hormones that control various bodily processes, their effects on your body can last much, much, much longer. So it's easier to turn your nervous system on and off as needed, whereas the, uh, the endocrine system, slower to get going, but the effects are more long-lasting. This term endocrinology, you may have heard of an endocrinologist before. An endocrinologist is a physician who deals with um, disorders of the endocrine system, your various endocrine glands. Um, over here on the right-hand side, there's just a generic diagram of the uh, endocrine system, and this is not a system in which all of the, the organs are connected with each other. They're scattered throughout the body, as you can see there, and we'll be talking about the, um, in more detail about these various glands or endocrine organs over on the um, anatomy side for Unit 1. <clears throat> 
And also another uh, concept you guys are going to be hearing a lot about, your endocrine glands contain cells which are secreting cells. That means that they produce and release the endocrine hormones that we're studying about. We'll also see how those uh, hormones wind up in your bloodstream. Um, they leave your bloodstream, they get into your body fluids that surround the various cells in your body, and they act on specific target cells. So hormones travel everywhere in your body, but they only act on cells that are their targets. They don't necessarily act on every single cell in your body, and we'll be seeing more about how that works as we move through this part of the course. All right, so when we say that your endocrine system controls and integrates various functions in your body, you know, what do we mean by that? Um, we're going to see many different examples. Reproduction, for example, the, the production of sperm cells in males, the production of the oocytes or the egg cells in females, um, all of that is governed or controlled by uh, hormones, and we will cover that later during the semester, closer to the end of the semester, we'll um, discuss the reproductive system in more detail. Growth and development, your growth, your increase in size as you go from being a little bitty baby to an adult, very much controlled by hormones, development as well, um, the development of new structures, new uh, structures in the body maturing over time, controlled by hormones. We'll spend quite a bit of time in this course discussing things like how different electrolyte levels are maintained, things like sodium, calcium are electrolytes, water levels in the body, extremely important. Those have to be controlled in order for us to maintain our homeostasis and survive. Um, the balance of certain nutrients, uh, we'll especially focus in here in this first unit. We'll talk quite a bit about glucose and how that is controlled in the body. Glucose is, a, uh, of course, a sugar that your cells love to use for energy, so it's very important that we control the levels of that in the body. Just controlling metabolism, energy balance. And uh, Now, we've all heard about people who have thyroid problems, for example, and that can cause their metabolism to slow down. And is that true or is that not really true? Yes, it is true for some people because your thyroid hormones really do control your metabolic rate, how fast your cells break down nutrients and harness the energy from those nutrients and use that for their own purposes. So we'll be talking more about that. Um, the endocrine system also controls mobilization of your body defenses. That gets into the immune system, which we will discuss in more detail a little bit later during the semester. We're just going to kind of touch on it here at the beginning. So hopefully you can see the endocrine system uh, winds up controlling many, many, many different bodily processes. It's very important for homeostasis of the human body. And so even though we're having a unit here on the endocrine system, get used to hearing about hormones because in every unit we will be talking about different hormones in more detail than um, what we will be here in this first unit in many cases. All right, just a little bit of a reminder about some terminology. In Biology 201, you learn about the difference between exocrine glands and endocrine glands. So exo and endo, you hear those prefixes a lot in biology. Exo usually refers in some way to the outside endo in some way refers to within. So your exocrine glands, those are not the ones we're really going to be studying in this unit. They secrete substances that um, wind up being released onto body surfaces. So they wind up getting um, secreted onto the skin or onto your mucous membrane linings. If you don't remember where your mucous membrane linings are, you might want to go back to uh, the second unit in, um, in Biology 201 where you learned about the tissues and the skin. Those are the linings of interior spaces that eventually have some exit to the outside of the body. Exocrine glands have ducts. A duct is basically a tube 
that carries the substance to the location where it is supposed to be deposited. So some examples of exocrine glands are the sweat glands you have in your skin, your salivary glands that actually they produce saliva or spit and they have little tubes that squirt that spit or saliva uh, inside the mouth. Those are examples of exocrine glands. Your pancreas has exocrine functions because it produces lots of digestive enzymes that get squirted onto the uh, inner lining of the small intestine. All right, endocrine glands, on the other hand, these produce chemical messenger, messengers we call hormones. These glands do not have ducts, okay? So if, if this is an endocrine gland over here, an endocrine gland is basically generally a cluster of cells, and a whole bunch of them, not just four of them, but they release hormones into the surrounding tissue fluids, the fluids that surround the cells of that uh, gland, and then those hormones wind up diffusing into blood vessels. Okay, so you have little tiny blood vessels called capillaries that extend through almost all of the tissues in your body, and so these hormones that are produced by your endocrine glands are able to move from the tissue fluids that surround the gland and into the bloodstream, and then the blood is able to transport those hormone molecules throughout the body. And as they travel throughout the body, those hormones are also able to exit the blood vessels and get into the, uh, the various tissues of the body where they can have effects on their target cells, the cells that they are programmed to try to control or, or cause to make responses. So don't forget, in Biology 201, you learn about the, uh, the fluids of the body and how those fluids are able to move from one compartment to another. That's going to come up quite a bit during this course. So if you don't remember some of that, you might want to go back to your uh, notes from Biology 201 where you had your introduction to body fluids and take a look at uh, some of those things for review. Also, osmosis. Please review the concepts um, of osmosis if you have, if you uh, don't remember everything you learned about osmosis in your A&P1 course. And another thing you want to do um, is review the basic information you learned about in A&P1 about cellular respiration and metabolism, because um, that's going to come up over and over again in this particular course. All right, so where do we have endocrine glands and these glands that secrete hormones? And we'll be talking a whole lot more about these, but some of the major ones include the pituitary gland. Remember that is um, along the middle underside portion of the brain. The thyroid, which is in your cervical region, um, anterior to your trachea. The parathyroid glands are little bitty glands that are on the posterior side of the thyroid. The adrenal glands, remember those, those sit on top of your kidneys. Um, the pineal gland, well, that should not be plural, <laughs> you only have one pineal gland. That is on the posterior portion of the, uh, uh, the brain stem, if you remember that from Biology 201. The hypothalamus, a very, very important part of the uh, brain, um, is an endocrine organ. It is composed of nervous tissue. The cells of the hypothalamus are actually neurons, so because of that it's called a neuroendocrine organ, and it has both nervous system functions and endocrine system functions. We have some uh, organs of the body that function both as endocrine and exocrine glands, so some examples of those include the pancreas, so I just told you the pancreas was an exocrine gland that makes digestive enzymes, but the pancreas also makes some endocrine hormones as well that diffuse into the bloodstream and travel throughout the body, and a very familiar organiza um, organization. Example of one of those is insulin, which controls our blood sugar levels. Your gonads, you know what your gonad, that is actually, believe it, gonads is actually an anatom <laughs> an anatomical term, believe it or not. Gonads refers to the testes in males and the ovaries in females. Those are your primary sex organs where sperm cells are produced in males and, 
and uh, egg cells or oocytes are produced in females. The placenta, an organ in a pregnant female that helps uh, nourish the um, developing embryo and fetus, believe it or not, has both endocrine and exocrine functions. Um, and then there are some other tissues and locations in the body that where you have like little patches or clusters of cells that have endocrine functions and um, those can include your adipose cells as your fat cells they actually produce some hormones and have endocrine functions your thymus the gland that sits up on top of the heart produces um, hormones that are responsible for maturation of uh, some of your white blood cells, which we'll learn more about when we cover the immune system later this semester. There are cells in the small intestine and the stomach that produce digestive system hormones. Um, the kidneys, believe it or not, produce um, a few different hormones that have various roles. And even your heart produces a, a hormone as well as, as you'll see as we move through the semester. All right, and there's a diagram again which is reviewing the locations of the major endocrine organs, endocrine organs of the body. And again, we'll be covering that in more detail over on the uh, anatomy side here for unit one. All right, so that was just an introduction to the endocrine system. In the next video lecture, the second one, we are going to talk a little bit more about what do we mean by hormones, chemical messengers, um, you know, what are these? And so we'll, uh, learn about some of the basic characteristics of hormones and other types of chemical signaling molecules that are produced by the body in the second video lecture here for Unit 1.